Okay, guys, so our first lesson is on something called evaluating expressions. Um, just to kind of let you know, this is a little bit of elementary school work. It was actually originally placed for unit zero, but we're kind of fitting it in now because it actually applies to some of the work we're doing um, actually in our next lesson. So um, there is one word. You don't have to write down the vocab word. We'll go through it we'll just where so you know what it means. Um, this vocab word's not on your vocab uh, worksheets, your notes. So that word is the word expression, everyone. Expression. All right, so here's what an expression is. It's a mathematical phrase that contains operations, numbers, and or variables. So what we're dealing with in this lesson is something that is half of an equation, or it's something without any, an equal sign. So for example, 6 minus y could be considered an expression. Okay. So that's something that we're going to be dealing with during this time. And we're going to be evaluating those. I'll show you what that means here in a second. All right. So with that said, go ahead and grab your worksheet. Again, make sure your first and last name are up at the top. Okay. Make sure you put your period on there and the date. Okay. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with, uh, let's take a look at problem number five. Problem number five. Okay, zoom in a bit. Okay, now, on, on this lesson, okay, um, this, the directions in each section are very important because what they're going to do is they're going to do something called they're just going to define the variable. All right. And what that means is, is they're going to tell you the value or the number that the variable actually stands for. When I say variable, I'm talking about the letter. So for example, it says evaluate each expression if a equals three, b equals five and c equals six. Okay. So for number five, for example, it says 2a minus three. So I'm going to walk you through this. Step one and step two kind of go hand in hand, but let's go ahead and do step one. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite the expression, but where the variable is, I'm going to replace the variable with just a set of parentheses. So instead of 2a minus three, I'm going to go two parentheses minus three. Okay, now step two, and remember I said step one and step two uh, kind of pretty much go together. Okay, step two is, is bless you, I'm going to go ahead and put the number in for A. If you forget, always look at the directions. It says right here, up here, A equals three. So I'm plugging in the three for A. Now after this, step three, I'm going to simplify, okay? So I'm going to simplify, basically solve the expression. Okay, but I, let's, for note purposes, let's go ahead and put PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. The reason is, is because as these get bigger and larger, and you're going to see if you kind of just glance at this paper, you're going to have some exponents that fall in there as well. We have to follow the correct order of operations. So in this case, we start with an easy one, right? All we have here is multiplication and subtraction. So according to this, I do multiplication first. So two times three is six. Okay, now right up above in our notes here, I want you guys to put step star just because it's not really a step, but it's more of a reminder. Remember what we talked about even a couple of weeks ago when we're dealing with larger problems, make sure you rewrite them. Stay organized, rewrite your problem. So I go ahead and I have six. I bring down my subtraction of three. So six minus three. At that point, guys, we can continue or finish doing step three, and that's to simplify. What's six minus three, everyone? Three. Three. And there you go. Okay. Now listen. This here is fairly simple, all right, when you look at it. Okay. Hopefully it is anyway. However, here's the difficult thing. A lot of us will get to the point where we don't want to write the parentheses. Okay. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you have to write the parentheses. 
Some of these, can you actually do it without the princess? Yeah, you can. But there's some of them that will, even on this page, that you will see some that if you don't write the parentheses, it's going to alter your answer a little bit. Okay? Also, as you get older, things are going to get larger. A lot of times, the exponents will be affected if you don't write the parentheses. So I'm getting you ready for later as you get older. And even on this page, you have to do, that's why I made it a step, you have to do step one, and that is use parentheses. So listen carefully. If you do not use parentheses, this will not be a complete homework assignment. All right, and so I know you wanna, you wanna make sure you get those parentheses in. So do me a favor, turn to your neighbor, point to them and say, it will be incomplete if you do not use parentheses on this homework assignment. Go ahead and do that now. All right, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I hope that got to everyone. I'm still worried about it. All right, but please, please use parentheses. Do that in your homework, all right? Okay, now besides the parentheses, any questions? I'm gonna let you guys try one. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, we're, we're, guys, when you ask questions, I probably should have been clear. That's my fault. When you ask questions, I want you to mainly ask questions about this particular problem because we're going to do like four different type of problems together. So we're getting to exponents, okay? So that's why I say, and if I get done with all the examples and you still don't understand something, then of course that's one to ask me about maybe a different problem. But, but we'll get through some of the other little things, all right? This is not the only problem I'm going to do with you guys. So, so any questions? Sorry, I should have been more specific. Any questions about this problem here? All right, here we go. Problem I want you guys to try on your own is problem number two. Number two. All right, I'll give you about 30 seconds. Go ahead and try that out. Number two, on your own. Go. Okay, anyone need more time? Okay, all right. I'll give you guys about 15, 20 more seconds. At this point, guys, if, if you see some others that are just the same and you feel comfortable with them, you can go ahead and, and work ahead on those similar type of problems. Don't do anything new on there, but that, you can get part of your homework done right now while we're waiting. Okay. All right. Uh, 30 seconds. Go ahead and uh, turn your partner. Now, there, there's a lot of, because some, uh, some people are absent, other people have switched to other periods of mine. There's some open desks. So please, please remember the rule. Make sure everyone's involved. All right. So if someone around you doesn't have a partner, okay, and they're behind you or in front of you, please just include them. That way, groups of three are okay if needed. So that way, everyone's involved on sharing, okay, and, and bouncing their ideas off each other, okay? Remember, you can share with more than one person if you want, all right, but share with your assigned partner first. That way everyone's involved with at least one person. All right, so 30 seconds, go ahead. Um, here, listen, here's what I want to do. I want you, you can share their, your answer, but I also want you to share, I want you to share how you wrote. You can even show them if you want. After you did step one and step two, what does your expression look like? So for example, this one right here, show them, oh, it's two times three in parentheses minus three. So show them that along with your answer. Okay, 30 seconds, go.
Okay. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead, going to pull one of our famous popsicle sticks here. All right. So here's, if I pull your desk, um, here's what I'm going to be asking you to, to share with me. I just want you to share with me, after you did step one and two, share with me what did your expression look like. I'm not asking you to solve it, okay? I'm just asking what did your expression look like, okay? Include, of course, parentheses when you describe it. Okay, here we go. All right, uh, seat number two. Like that. The threes in parentheses like this. Okay, agree, disagree. Okay. Some agreements, some disagreements. All right, let me let me go ahead and find out. Uh, actually, the one of you guys that agree, anyone want to share how yours was different? Anyone brave enough? Some people are tempted. You want to share? Uh, you can share. Uh, okay. Uh, I put five next to six, but six was in parentheses. And then... Multiply five and okay, I'm not asking you to solve it. I'm just asking how the expression looks. So is that how yours looked? Yeah. Agree, disagree. Okay. Ooh, still have some disagreements. All right. Anyone want to share? The five's in parentheses, too. All right. Who can tell me why are there parentheses around all these? Because they're all letters. Because <laughs> they're all letters. Every single one of them were letters, so you had to make sure it was parentheses, parentheses, divided by parentheses. And then you plug your numbers in. All right, so guys, make sure if you didn't have it, make sure all of those things are in parentheses. Okay. Now at this point, right, I'm just you guys just did step one and two for us. So at this point, here's what I'm doing next. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do step three. Do order of operations. Now there's multiplication and division. We do it at the same time, just left to right. So five times six is thirty. I'm gonna rewrite it. Now, once I solve it, if I want to put it in parentheses, I can. I don't have to. Okay. And, or I shouldn't say solve, but simplify. And now it's just 30 divided by 3. 10. All right. Questions on that? All right. Let's go with a one that's slightly different. All right. So, let's go down below. Let's take a look at problem 11. Problem 11. So be careful, right? Because this is in a different section, meaning different directions, which means they're defining these variables differently. Okay? So here's all of our defined variables. W equals 9, X equals 7, Y equals 10, Z equals 4. So here we go. I, I, there's no new steps, guys, at all. I'm going to do the exact same steps, but once we get to a part, I want to talk a little bit about it. So here we go. We have w squared minus yz. So I'm going to have parentheses squared minus parentheses parentheses. I make sure my number's in here, the correct integer. So w is 9, so I put 9 in here. The y is 10, so I put 10 in here. And the z is 4, I put 4 in here. So I just did step 1 and 2. Step 3, follow my order of operations. Remember. Even though there's parentheses, remember in order of operations, the P, the parentheses means you're solving or simplifying the problem inside the parentheses. The thing is, is none of these are math problems or ex expressions of any kind. They're just, they're just numbers. They're just integers. They're, okay, so there's nothing to solve in the parentheses. There is an exponent though. All right, so it may have been a little while since you've dealt with exponents. So remember, this. 2 here, me, what's in front of it is the parentheses, meaning everything inside the parentheses is to the second power, or it's also called squared, which means this is not 9 times 2. So many people, that's automatic. People go, oh, 9 times 2, 18. Okay, be careful of that, right? 
Exponents is repeated multiplication, meaning there are this many of these multiplied together. So there me that means there's two nines multiplied together, which means nine times nine is what everyone? 81, okay? So I did my exponent. I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite, okay? Now be very careful. Some people may be tempted to now just go left to right. No, 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 no. Remember, we have to do multiplication before subtraction. So 10 times four, it's 40. I rewrite it and we have 81 minus 40. You can go over to the side and solve it if you need to. Okay, some people might not need to and we get the answer of 41. Okay. All right, so problems with exponents, that's what it will look like. Any questions about that? Exponents? Okay, gonna give you one very similar like that to try. <clears throat> All right, the one just to its right, problem 14. Problem 14, okay. I'll start with 30 seconds, see what you can get done. All right, go. Okay, anyone need more time? All right, about 15 more seconds in. Again, if, you, if you're already done, you feel comfortable, you can do, try a couple more simple ones with exponents. We're not sharing quite yet, all right? Let some people, if we struggle a little bit, that's all right. We're gonna talk about it in just a bit. Try your best right now. Okay, all right, so let's go back to 14 if we moved on. And uh, for this 30 seconds, um, share your answer, number one, and, and if you have some extra time, then you can share your expression again. Make sure they have those parentheses there. All right, 30 seconds, go ahead and turn to your assigned neighbor, go. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a free pass on this one, not pull a popsicle stick. I'm going to go ahead and put on here parentheses squared minus two parentheses. I'm going to plug in my z, which was four. I'm going to plug in my x, which is seven. All right, nothing to do in, in parentheses, right? So I'm gonna to go to do the exponent, all right? Exponent is on the parentheses. That means the four is squared. Remember, not four times two, right? It's four times four, which is 16. Go ahead and rewrite it. And then of course, don't do your subtraction. Don't do that 16 minus two, right? You wanna do the multiplication next. Two times seven is 14, and 16 minus 14 is two. Okay? So listen carefully. Um, this, in my opinion, is one of the most dangerous kind of problems that people struggle with. And here's why I say that, is because those parentheses almost separate that from that. So visually it looks like we do 16 minus two, and we're not pointing anybody out and, or anything, but I do know that probably, I bet some people did that first and then got 14 times seven. 
Okay, so be very careful. That will draw you in. Always make sure once you get rid of parentheses and exponents that you still pay attention to multiplication and uh, division along with addition and subtraction. Keep, keep going in order. Okay. All right. Any questions on 14? All right. Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at problem number 15. Okay. Problem number 15. All right, you're going to see me go through the same steps, but what we're going to have here are embedded parentheses, meaning parentheses inside of parentheses. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to go about doing this. All right, I'm going to go ahead, remember what I said, we're going to rewrite everything exactly the same, but put parentheses where the variables are. So that set of parentheses is there. The W, I'm going to put parentheses there. Z, parentheses there divided by six with those in parentheses and the exponent, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and plug in for W, I'm gonna plug in a nine. For Z, I'm gonna plug in a four. Now, I'm not gonna be picky about this, but what you'll normally see, especially as you get older, is when there's embedded parentheses, meaning parentheses inside parentheses, the outer parentheses will become brackets. And all that is, it's kind of like a code. It kind of helps you visually see where the outside parentheses are because they're different than those. But they're still, they still work like parentheses. If you still keep them as parentheses, well, all I would suggest is maybe make them a little bit bigger than the inner parentheses, the embedded ones, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. Still gonna follow order of operations. P for parentheses, I need to solve what's in there. Be careful, don't say, oh, well, there is no parentheses, nine and four, no, 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 these are parentheses. Meaning before we even worry about that exponent, we have to solve everything in here. So in here, we only have multiplication and division. So we're just going left to right inside the parentheses. So nine times four is 36 divided by six. If you wanna keep them as brackets, you can. If you wanna change them back to parentheses, you can, it's up to you. And then, I finish off what's in the parentheses, 36 divided by six, which is six. Don't forget to rewrite it properly. And ladies and gentlemen, six squared, right, is not 12, 36. Six times six is 36. Okay. Gonna give you one to try like that, any questions? All right, here we go. Problem I want you guys to try is go back up to the top section and I want you to try out problem number six. Problem six towards the top there, all right? Um, I'll check in with you guys in 30 seconds. Try it on your own first. 30 seconds, go. Okay, anyone need more time on that one? Okay. Check in with you guys in about 15 to 20 more seconds. Okay, at this point, those of you that are already done, work ahead. I, I think that's pretty much the last problem we're going to do. So that pretty much covers almost all the problems on there. So you can get to work until we're ready to share. Okay, so 
Hopefully everyone's done with number six. So 30 seconds, go ahead, turn to your neighbor. Um, I really want you not only to share your answer, but definitely share your expression, kind of like I did on number 15 here. I want you to share, and the best way to share it, of course, is just show them, all right? So problem number six, give you guys 30 seconds, go ahead and share, go. Okay, here we go. So, number six, 25 divided by B, all in parentheses squared. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead, rewrite everything, and include parentheses where the letters are. So again, I can use bigger parentheses on those outer ones or change them to brackets, up to you. Don't forget your exponent. Sometimes it can be easy to forget. Okay, B, I look up here, B is five, so I plug in the five. Okay, so remember I do what's in parentheses before worrying about the exponent. So 25 divided by five is five. Well, this is a pretty easy one. Five squared is five times five, which gives us 25. Okay, questions on that problem? Okay, now I do wanna point this out, all right? The only one that is kind of left over here that's a little different than everything else we've done is problem number 10. You have, you have a uh, numerator and a denominator, okay? So I think we've talked about this before briefly last week or two weeks ago. However, I wanna make sure I remind you, all right? When you go to solve it, you're gonna, of course, plug it, and I'm gonna do a fake one, okay? But let's say I have, um, I don't know, three times seven up here. What you're gonna do is, is you're gonna treat them like separate problems. You're gonna simplify the numerator and simplify the denominator. Well, the denominator doesn't need to be simplified. The numerator can though. Seven times three is 21. Don't forget, if it's an improper fraction at the end, this can be simplified further because it's division. So 21 divided by three is seven. Okay, now I'm not saying that that's not, the, that's not that problem, right? But I'm just showing you how to do number 10. Okay, any questions about those, what appear to be fractions there, those division problems? Okay, so you'll do the division in the very end, all right? Okay guys, I'm actually, I'm gonna, you're gonna have some time, we had a great lesson, so go ahead and I'm gonna give you some time to get that paper done. All right, go ahead and get started. 